Hello, I'm Renee Esquivel, and you're tuned into my YouTube channel, Technologist on the Go. In this video, I walk you through step by step on building an Ubuntu virtual machine on your Mac Mini M1 or M2 or Apple Silicone. I'm using the UTM application to do that. I'll walk you through it, doing my best to make sure that it's as doable and as straightforward as can be. And then in the end, I'll actually show you some gameplay of Fortnite, um, Chapter 4, Season 2, using Boosteroid, and that was actually played on the Firefox browser. Okay, let's get right into it. Okay, let's take it from the top. So start your Safari browser. And... Uh, I'm going to type in uh, download uh, UTM images and uh, that result there you see uh, first one the gallery click on that these are the images uh, uh, that you can all you can run on the UTM application and I'm going to go ahead and do the download for the Ubuntu server for the ARM processor because this is on a Mac Mini M1, the uh, 2020 model. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, download Ubuntu 22.04.2 LTS. LTS, that's the more stable version, so I want to go with stability. Okay, and uh, now that we have the image downloaded, uh, I'm just going to step through their own, uh, the guide that uh, um, UTM has, so click on that, click on virtualize. And uh, select Linux. And uh, select the ISO image that was previously downloaded. So let me go to where that is, and that be in my downloads folder. Or I may have actually moved it into another target folder. There it is, the ISO image. Okay, let's go click continue. And I'll stick with four gig of RAM. I want, I'll use four cores, I have up to eight. Uh, it doesn't say anything regarding enabling uh, hardware acceleration but I'm going to go ahead and check that because it is uh, supported at least in like a beta version on Ubuntu so I want to give it a try uh, select the maximum space and I'm going to go with 128 gigabytes I have a one terabyte built in um, but 64 would be just fine if you want to go with that. Now I previously created a um, shared drive. So I can go ahead and uh, select that. And it's in my desktop. UTM shared, it's my folder, and that's the one right there. So I'll select that. If you don't have one ready, you can just move forward. You can always go back in and add that after the fact easily. Okay, time to uh, wrap it up, save this, these settings for that virtual machine, and then we'll get right into it. Okay, so you want to go ahead and uh, click on the start button.
Okay, it's going now. And so far, so good. So I'll select the Ubuntu Ubuntu server with the uh, try or install Ubuntu server. I mean, the first option. Go with that. And waiting for it to um, do an initial load. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, the installer is going. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, default English language. Most of what we're going to select is just going to be the default. I'm going with the Ubuntu server, the very first option. I picked search for third party drivers. You actually don't need to do that. It's not going to find any. But I was hoping it would. Okay, it's a, it's a bridge driver for the uh, Ethernet. It's going to make use of my internet connection that's on the Mac Mini M1 side. Um, let's see here. It can use the entire disk that, or that you've created, the virtual disk. That's in this case 128 gigabytes. Again, I'm going with just the defaults. And a review there, and that's fine. I can move forward. And uh, in this case, you have to go with continue. That's not the default. I'm going to go ahead and put my name in. I'll give a name to my uh, system. I have a name in convention. Uh, the name you give here is for your login. And I'm putting in the password. And let's, I'm going to go ahead and select Ubuntu Pro. You don't have to. I did. It's a separate installation. You get a code. You go to the website that they show there, ubuntu.com forward slash pro forward slash attach. And uh, it's good for software updates. And you can have it uh, free on up to five systems. So it's actually very accommodating. Uh, for Ubuntu to do that. Okay, it shows the tokens added. Let's continue. I want the open SSH server, so I will go ahead and select that. That lets you uh, remote into the system using a secure shell. It's low level, but it's fast and very efficient. Um, this is software packages. We're just going to go with the default. OK, so now it's running. I believe this part took maybe 15 to 18 minutes, but I'm actually going to speed through that. So you're not even going to be watching this for a minute. OK, it's done now. So Reboot now is the option at the bottom. Okay, the first time it booted, it seemed like it hung, so I closed it, and then I went ahead and restarted it. And this time, it, went, it came up just fine. Now, uh, I still had the image attached uh, so I went and select boot from next volume. Um, just detach that image. It's mounting it as a virtual CD-ROM. If you detach that, it, it'll just boot straight into Ubuntu without prompting you again. 
Okay, so now we're at a login because there is no desktop or GUI that's loaded. This is the server version. So we can install the desktop and I'm going to walk you through doing that. Log in with the login name and password you created earlier. There's steps here for getting the um, uh, Ubuntu installed, the desktop. So let me position it so you can see that as we execute it. Very good. On to the next step, which is to actually install the desktop. Okay, uh, let's see, it's about to download about two gigabytes. And again, I'm going to speed through this, so you're not going to be watching it, but for some several seconds. Last step is to reboot the system. And here's where it's uh, uh, concluding now. So we're going to do the reboot. Okay, and again, uh, select the uh, next volume. But like I said, if you, once you detach that uh, ISO image, it won't do this any longer. Okay, don't be afraid of those scary messages there. You're going to see the desktop load up in just a moment. Okay. Type in the password that you uh, created initially. And you're at the Ubuntu desktop. And the Spice tools are installed. You might ask, what are the SPICE tools? Well, those are the integration drivers so that you can copy and paste between Mac OS and the Ubuntu. Uh, and it's a way to make sure that the uh, you be able to use the keyboard and mouse from your Mac Mini M1 on the Ubuntu side. Now, initially, I installed it turning on hardware acceleration. I found that to be disastrous. It crashed. The browsers would crash the system. So what you see me do there is how you turn it off. I simply chose the same video driver that was not accelerated. OK, now this is a sample of uh, Fortnite Chapter 4 Season 2 running. Um, it looks fairly decent at this point, but it has not been very good. I don't have a lot of at control. Uh, using Escape and Evasion, I made it to the end, uh, but where I should have been able to easily take out the opponent, they easily got me. So, And that was with Escape and Evasion. If you were to try to go ahead and meet them head on, it wouldn't work well. Well, there you have it. Uh, if you need Ubuntu, you have this video here to step you through how to do it. Um, I don't believe you'll be doing it for cloud gaming uh, through a browser because it's uh, Boostroid is just susceptible to too many variables that will 
immediately upend the performance and uh, your gaming viability. Um, I just don't see it uh, it's working well. Uh, and I didn't see it work well. Even dropping it down to 60 frames a second, it didn't do well. But if you have other reasons, aside from cloud gaming, well, this video should help you get your Ubuntu system up and running. And then, of course, you can use it for, other per for whatever productive purposes you have in mind. Until next time, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll do the same for your channel. And we'll help each other out that way. Bye-bye.